want you to imagine we're both astronauts. We've just landed on this newly discovered planet. We both step out of our spacecrafts onto this alien world. And I turn to you and I say, so, fellow explorer, what's your mission on Earth when you're not traversing the cosmos? How would you respond to that? That's just such a cool image. All right, my astronaut friend. My mission on Earth is essentially to start a revolution. It's already happening, but from my own vantage point, bring as many people as I possibly can into alignment with each other under the same mission. I know so many of us are already working on doing the best we can for ourselves to improve humanity. And so many people are hosting classes and sharing all their wisdom and doing all this stuff. What my mission is to find all of those people who are doing all of that and all the people who are interested in taking part in that kind of learning and getting us under one roof, getting us under one home and physically manifesting that space where we exist in harmony with everything. Say we take over a town, for example, we purchase an entire town and we retrofit it. We completely rearrange everything. Like we don't need Rexalls for God's sakes or a hundred shoppers drug marts in a city. Imagine what would happen if we decided to get rid of those buildings or perhaps utilize them in a different way. But imagine how much land we could clear up if we got rid of all of the unnecessary convenience stores, for example, or Rexalls or all the different drug companies and all the stuff that we actually don't need to exist as a human being. If we got rid of all of it, what kind of amazing opportunities would we have to build with our land? Like how much food would we be able to grow? How many issues would we be able to solve just by being able to plant a couple different tomato things over there and over here and over there, man? How many people would be eating differently? That's essentially the mission is personally, my story has been one of at 19, I was hit, man. I was hit with a hammer on the head. Kate, it's time for you to realize that you're alive and to actually do something with this fact. It was a pretty trippy experience, Peter, because I guess just being that young and growing up where I grew up, being around the people I was around, there was nobody who really shared the same perspective of life that I did once I finally got hit on the head. I was totally lost wondering what the hell is going on here? What is all this stuff around me? All of a sudden labels were falling off. I couldn't pronounce trees anymore. I didn't know what that was anymore. I'd saw water for the first time and I'd felt it for the first time at 19. It was so crazy, man. Everything just dissolved in front of me, but became more real than it ever has been at the same time. And once that happened, I started on this incredible pursuit Oh, I need to understand what it is that is going on here, especially within yourself, because you're generating this entire experience, right? I did a deep dive into consciousness and what it means to be inside of a body and how does the body actually operate. And if I lift my arm up like this and put this arm out to the side like this, what kind of chemistry does this create in my body? I wanted to know all of it. And I'm still continuing to learn more and more every day about it. Well, on a personal level, my mission is to help other people dismantle themselves and figure out how it is that they're actually creating their reality and change whatever it is that they want to change or perhaps the things that they aren't, they aren't even aware of that are holding them back from creating the greatest possible version of themselves to help them see it so that they can make those changes to go into the world as the highest and greatest version of themselves because ultimately we're a collective of individuals. Like the body is a collection of trillions of different cells. If one cell isn't operating at its highest functionality, it starts to affect all of the rest. Your cells start to all clump together and all of a sudden you're getting blood clots and all kinds of issues in the body. It's the same thing with us. If we're not operating at our highest and greatest potential, look at the world we're existing in right now. <laughs> How many people are actually living the life that they want to live and they feel truly fulfilled and they feel happy and joyful and they love to wake up every single day and the first thought that they have when they wake up is thank you thank you for another chance because you don't know something could happen you could go in your sleep but you got a chance to wake up today and that's brilliant so what are we going to do with it that's the mission is to just help people realize or perhaps enhance that incredible curiosity and potential within them to create whatever emotion you want to experience at that moment like at the start of this call or at the start of our podcast 
before we officially started, I was telling you I was going through so much stuff in my life right now. And I'll probably open up a bit about it too because I want to also share my journey with people because they can probably relate. Like I, I notice a lot of people, they don't actually share the things that they're feeling and the things that they're going through and the mistakes that they've made. And I don't want to be one of those people who tries to cover it up and say, look at me, I'm like a spiritual guru guy who knows everything and I'm so good at this and you should listen to me. You know how many mistakes I've made in the last month? Oh my goodness. You are in charge of creating the emotion that's inside of you right now. And I was telling you, I'm going through all this crap, man. And I honestly feel really anxious right now because I'm not going to lie. Why should I be afraid of being judged for feeling ang anxious? If you're going to judge me, that's your problem. I don't have to accept your judgment and make it worse for myself. Before we ended up going further with the conversation, I, I did tell you as well that before this podcast started, I went into the theta state. And I connected with Source and I downloaded into myself that this experience was going to help me transmute that energy, which it is. I feel so much better than I did before this conversation. So I said to you too, and honestly, Peter, thank you, man. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to transmute the energy of all the crap that had happened just before I jumped on this podcast with you, because it's a beautiful opportunity. Thank you for sharing your vulnerability. One of the biggest problems I've seen is that many people can give a really good spiritual talk, but can they live it? Can they live it with all of its challenges and go into the rough and tumble of spirituality? It definitely is. It is not a journey for the weak or, or the people who aren't brave, man. It's something that will absolutely rock the entirety of everything you think is real. It's taking the red pill in the matrix. You're mm. shattering everything you thought once was. It's not just reading tarot cards and burning sage and playing happy music. Are you kidding me? Those things are a beautiful consequence of the spiritual journey. Just being alive is spiritual. Whether you are awakened to that fact or not, this is a spiritual experience. So everything is spiritual in that sense. And yes, there are certain divination tools, I think is what the more popular term for it is now, that are wonderful things for you to explore your subconscious. Like the tarot decks, for example, they were specifically designed to trigger aspects of your subconscious so that you can relate to the particular image that showed up and have an awareness like, whoa, this image is making me think of this experience I had with my dad where he said this and it hurt me like this. And boom, okay, you've just created another level of awareness for yourself, or at least that's one purpose of the tarot deck. Oh, where was I going with that, Peter? Sometimes the insight comes in the pause. Yeah, I was talking about how spirituality isn't just the surface things that you see. It really is an uncomfortable experience because essentially you're becoming more aware of everything that exists. You cannot become more aware of your happiness and your joy and your pleasure and those wonderful experiences without also becoming more aware of the pain that you might experience. But as you go through your healing journey, I don't want to put it on anybody that they have to suffer, but it's very likely that you're going to experience great levels of discomfort the higher up you ascend. Because essentially what's happening at this level, say right now, after this podcast, I go in and I do a subconscious reprogramming session on myself about some stuff or I do some kind of healing. Okay, I've just done healing. I've ascended this much. And now I have the ability to look down at the rest of my life that I couldn't see before because I've now gained a little bit more of a vantage point. I can see all these different pain points. I can see all these different things that I've created that are not actually in alignment with the reality that I want. In order for me to transform those things, I have to go into the discomfort of the person who created those experiences in the first place. When you start to realize that every single thing in your reality is a consequence of your own decisions, that hurts, man. That seriously hurts because you got to take responsibility for every single thing that has ever happened to you. Sure, there are some things that are not your fault, like getting hit by a car. You can't exactly say that that was your fault. But ultimately, when it comes to things like the relationships that you've had, those are 100% your fault. The jobs that you've had, 100% your responsibility. The place that you're living in, 100% your responsibility. The car, the everything, the, the glasses to, to protect your eyes from the blue light, it's all your responsibility, right? And to, to go back from that vantage point, the bird's eye view now and say, okay, now it's time for me to level up. 
it's somewhat of a, an experience of suffering is what most people would say but only if you choose to exist in that reality once again because once you realize that your inner state has just changed into something that is discomfort if you're aware of it have the choice to change that you have the choice to transform that energy into something beautiful it doesn't have to stay there but in more and more than ever are realizing this but compared to the rest of the population not everybody realizes that they're 100 percent in charge of how they feel at all times just because somebody pissed you off because it triggered something within you does not mean that you have to force yourself and perpetuate your personal suffering because of something that they did that triggered a belief within you no you have the choice so long as you can cultivate the awareness and that's what happens when you elevate yourself when you continue to ascend when you continue to heal you elevate you see more and then you have the opportunity to say hey, this hurts i'm going to transform this energy that hurts too let me transform that and it's just a continuous cycle man until you get up there and that's an interesting point too that saying that it feels like we take one step forward and two steps back I never really agreed with that because I never looked at it like you're taking a step back unless it's to gain a greater vision of where it was you once were. But to me, it's always like you're moving upwards and looking down because it's not like you're actually going further back down the ladder when you realize these things that are uncomfortable. You've gone further up the ladder and that's why you can see them. You're not taking steps back. You're actually taking steps forward by realizing that this is painful in my life. And now that you realize it, okay, what are you going to do about it? This is why I went into Theta before. So along this journey as well, how I became a subconscious reprogramming expert and a Theta healing practitioner is because of the fact that I wanted to understand what was actually happening inside of me. How much quote unquote control do I actually have over myself? And when I became a Theta healing practitioner, everything changed. Everything changed from that day forward because now I had one of the tools. And honestly, compared to any other modality that I have ever practiced in or have seen or experienced, Theta Healing is by far the greatest. And I cannot wait to help expand Theta Healing to the world so that more people can have this incredible tool. The process of ascending, the Theta state, if you choose to only remain inside of the regular brainwave state that you are in when you're experiencing pain, it is going to be very difficult for you to transform that energy as quickly as it would be as if you decided to change your brainwave state. And Theta is so fast now, I can do it in a matter of seconds. And it, it doesn't take long to learn how to do it. I posted a meditation on my YouTube channel, which is, by the way, give myself a, a pat on the back. It's almost got 4,000 views, which is huge to me. And it got me almost 100 subscribers, just one video. I was like, oh my God, this is incredible, man. So like, congratulations to me for myself, because I'm honestly so proud of that. I'm glad that I took the steps of bravery instead of saying, ah, I don't know if people will like this. Ah, is it perfectly edited? Ah, I don't know if I should share it. Ah, no, just do it. And then deal with what emotions come as the experience unfolds, because that's how you're going to transcend as quickly as possible. By You get these downloads all the time, those ideas that open up your mind and show you the path. This is how you need to choose in this moment in order for you to get to the next point where you're going to choose your greatest reality. If you decide to say, no, I'm scared and you choose fear, you're not going to ever be able to open up that door to the new possibilities, that new branch that's going to open up for you. It's directly correlated with that experience of ascending and seeing more. Like I put out the meditation video and yeah, I did have those feelings of, oh crap, man. I don't know if this is even going to do anything. I'm nervous to share it with people. Perfect. Thank you for the gift of me being aware that I was nervous. Because now I get to explore my subconscious and figure out why am I nervous in the first place? Why do I care at all? This is something that I created out of my own love for people. What should I care if people don't like it? Even if one person loves it, that's all that I would need. Even if nobody loves it, I loved it. So what does it actually matter? There's something inside of our subconscious, a belief that is lurking there that's saying, you're not good enough, or this will never work or you're unworthy of actually getting subscribers on your YouTube channel or however it's going to manifest. Essentially, that's the process. By continuing to challenge that fearful state that you have, and I say challenge as in actually address it in the sense of why am I experiencing this? You don't need to be afraid of reality. Who says? 
Why do you need to be afraid of that? Even coming down to our body, we can gain such control over our survival state that people are snake charmers. They don't care about being bitten by a king cobra, but that same king cobra would eat somebody for lunch, kill him on the spot. And that guy's just standing there playing his flute, dancing with a snake. There's people that train lions and tigers and bears to do all kinds of stuff. What are these people thinking? There's a certain type of consciousness that every single one of us can reach that is fully loving. That's unconditional loving. I mean, it, unconditionally loving. I mean, there's so many people that you can explore, like Wim Hof, for example. If you haven't become excited to explore your human potential, I would say go and look at Wim Hof and what this guy has done, just to give you a couple of his accolades to spark your intrigue even more. He climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest in shorts, shorts, yeah, yeah. without shoes, man. The guy has run marathons in the middle of winter with no shoes on, in shorts, no shirt. He still holds the Guinness World Record for the longest time submerged in an ice bath. He's what we could consider to be a phenomenon. He's an outlier. He actually teaches people how to do his breathing method. I do it every day now in the shower and I don't even do hot showers anymore. I literally crank my shower to ice cold. I start doing the breathing method. I step in there and first of all, the breathing method alkalizes your body. So you're getting huge benefits from that. But then you get it on your biggest cold receptors and all of a sudden your dopamine levels are skyrocketing. I might be getting this wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's eight times more dopamine than if you were to take a hit of cocaine by stepping into a cold shower. And it continues too. If you do it every day, like it just continues to compound by something like 11 minutes a week in a cold shower will increase your dopamine levels by 800%. Imagine how good you would feel if you just decided to take cold showers every day to equal 11 minutes a week. It, would, it totally changes your life. I swear by it. I started doing it maybe four months ago. I would never change it. Not a chance. And actually, I was visiting my mom with my family. She's got a, a beautiful house up north on a lake and we're spending some time up there. And for some reason, the dude who installed the shower regulated the temperature to only go to a certain temperature that's still warm. Man, was I ever missing my cold showers. So I was jumping in the lake instead, still trying to get the cold shock. And yeah, that itself is totally life-changing. Going back to some of the things that you were saying about two steps backward and one step forward, one of the things to understand is that not all steps are equivalent. When a wall comes down, you can either focus on the debris or you can step into the space that it's affording you. Many look at the debris and they focus on that. It's important to set your feet upon the path of the unknown and step into that space because that's the invitation. The invitation is to say, this is the crucible through which the trajectory of your life's unfolding must pass. Because the human realm is one of tremendous importance. It holds the potential to either allow life's evolution to continue flourishing towards higher orders of existence and awareness, or it becomes a regressive force hindering and disrupting those valuable currents that are flowing forth from the source. We have a sacred responsibility. The earth, the planet, and human experience represents a sacred grant and grace and opportunity from the creative powers that first spark life into being, just like a gardener who nurtures a seedling with care. It has been seeded to provide the fertile ground which we can cultivate for human skills to take root and to blossom and ultimately transcend this terrestrial form. Again, with this covenant comes a sacred responsibility. And that sacred responsibility is that the human mind and the spirit must choose to honor it. We must align with our actions, with the fundamental laws and processes that give rise to complex thriving systems across multiple scales of existence. There has to be a reverence in there, a reverence to protect mm. the ingenious designs and dynamics of which we are one, through which life at and emerges and evolves. There's an intrinsic drive within us to continually grow, to create, to struggle, 
to cultivate our highest evolutionary potential as a species. I don't think it's for our own glorification. I think it's part of the great cosmic currents that dependably flow when we harmonize with the deepest patterns of our existence. In essence, we have to learn to live with the means of what the earth and the cosmos can sustainably provide us with. One of those is understanding about brainwave patterns, because the cosmos can sustainably provide causing no more than the minimal disruption required for our thriving wanton destruction and domination of others and contravening the sacred laws of life. These are grave violations of what I see as the covenant. So what do we do? We must embody the virtues of diligence, peaceful order, creativity, wisdom. So you come onto the podcast and you're in disarray and you do this work, you do this theta healing, because you're using your full faculties and the power of your mind, like Wim Hof does, because that's just conditioning. We can all do it. And not only the powers of the mind, but of the spirit to assimilate what I see as the deepest inner mystery. In this way, we can become a living emanation of what is a cosmic current by using our unique positions in the crucible of existence. Why? So we can help to usher life's expressions towards a yet unrealized transcendence. And if we fulfill our end of that covenant through sincere striving and sacrifice, guess what? We can then allow the vast cosmological procession to wash and flow through us this universal wash in dynamism and beauty and ever-increasing levels of coherent complexity that will blossom from that original seed of the divine source into the human deal. That was pure poetry. <laughs> that was so very entertaining to listen to and educational. I, lo I love the way that you speak, Peter. I love your vocabulary. It's refreshing to be able to talk to somebody who has such an incredible grasp and understanding of such a complex thing, because ultimately every word that we speak is impossible in its definition of what we're actually trying to say. But you have an amazing way of explaining something that is so hard to just even sit with. That was beautiful, man. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I love language and I'm always trying to find a way of looking at what is the human view? What is the ethical view? What is the universal view? I'm attempting to find the narrative that isn't necessarily in a book or something that I've read, but something where I can start to self-assemble. It's a bit like having all the jigsaw pieces of the puzzle, but you don't have the box with the picture on it. So you're not quite sure how they all go together. They fit somehow. You got to figure it out. Tell me about revolu revolutionized reality, because I understand that's led by yourself. And is it your wife, Emily? Yes, but she's more so focused on her own mission right now, which is to help mothers fully embody their divine motherhood, or she right. calls it the wild mom, the original mother, because there's so many things. I've, I've learned so much from her. It's unbelievable, Peter, just about what they've changed about how kids come into the world or about how mothers have been conditioned to treat their children and how a mother's intuition has basically been nullified. Oh my gosh, it's truly incredible to listen to what she has to say about motherhood. And essentially, I never know quite how to say this because I don't want to say that I run the revolutionized reality thing, but there has to be somebody who the idea comes to. And there has to be somebody who continues the idea, right? But ultimately, I don't want it to belong to me. I know that it doesn't belong to me. It's meant to be something that everyone and anyone can say, I'm a part of this and I own this. It's not to be like just even owned, I guess. It's supposed to be just a part of the cosmos. It's supposed to be what we're headed towards, the new earth. That's essentially what it's supposed to mean. 
somebody has to be a terminal point for it. But somebody has to be a terminal point, not yeah. trying to run something. I, I yeah. get that. But from what I can glean from looking at your website and speaking to you earlier, is that it's a beacon of spiritual and financial liberation, aiming mm -hmm. to unite spiritual seekers in a community centered around self-sustainability, self-mastery, and unconditional love. And through practices like ask formations and theta healing, mm -hmm. you facilitate personal transformation, transcendence, mm -hmm. and a collective elevation of consciousness. Would that be a fair statement? <laughs> I should get you to do the copywriting for, <laughs> for the website, man. That was amazing. Yeah, that's absolutely precise. And I guess I also want to say too, I, I absolutely love Theta Healing. And of course, it's because of my experience with it. Somebody might prefer Reiki over Theta Healing. And I'm not saying Theta Healing is the one thing. Everybody come and do this. But it is definitely a cheat code, just like Reiki would be. I'm also going to be certified in breath, certified in yoga, certified in EFT tapping, certified in the emotion code, and certified in Joe Dispenza's meditations, and all this different stuff because I want to be somebody. I want revolutionized reality. If it was a person, I would want it to be me because I'm somebody who wants to understand everything that there possibly is to understand. And I don't just mean in the sense of what we would consider spiritual, like I want to know all the breathing. If I put this microphone on my stand, what's the configuration of this microphone? How does it work? How come it's able to connect by a cable that runs into my audio interface and the sound is translated and there's these little dials here I can flip around and stuff? What does it all mean? It's all just such a crazy mystery to me. Like right now, we're talking from different points on the planet, man. And then this is going to be uploaded essentially through an invisible field, just like how we're receiving consciousness. It's basically a signal of consciousness that's going to go inside of a body, which is YouTube or wherever it's going to go. It's going to be able to be experienced by other people. It's insane. It's so amazing. And all this stuff is happening to us, around us, with us at all given times of the day. Like the fact that you can walk over to your light switch and just flick it on and off a hundred times if you want to and have a seamless stream of light coming in and out of your household. That is a freaking phenomenal thing to me. Absolutely amazing. Like a, a cell phone just blows my mind, man. In terms of how things work, can you elaborate a bit more on how Ask Formations and Theta Healing contribute to the mission of revolutionized reality and how they empower individuals to achieve self-mastery and personal growth. Yeah, for sure. So essentially, I believe from my experience, I know that subconscious reprogramming is the most important thing that you could possibly do for yourself. If you want to look at some more esteemed professionals in this area. You could look at people like Dr. Joe Dispenza, who I mentioned before, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. B. Serious. Go and look at their work, every single one of them. And so basically every great sage of all time has said that your belief system essentially directs the outcome of your life. And they've been able to nail it down to a percentage point of at least 90% up to 95% of your reality is completely directed by the unconscious programs that you have received throughout your life. You're affirming from your regular conscious state. You're trying to combat the programs that are there. You're standing against the 95% as a 5% saying, I am amazing. I am love. I am light. And if they're working for you, go ahead and keep using them. But I'm just saying that there is something better. It has been improved and that exists now. They're ask formations. When you ask your subconscious a question, it has to answer it. This is the whole purpose of discovering who you are. When you need to know something about why your life is in disarray, you sit in meditation and you ask, why is this happening? What have I done? What have they done? You ask questions and then all of a sudden they start to come to you and even quicker when you're in the theta state because you're directly connected to your subconscious mind. Ask formations are intentional questions. What I mean by intentional questions is if you wanted to experience more love in your life, you would create an ask formation that would say, why am I experiencing unconditional love in every aspect of my life, no matter what? Now your subconscious has to answer that question. You didn't ask it, hey, did you have a bad day today? And you either say yes or no. It is now searching for the answers to that question. How do I justify this? If I asked you right now, what are three things that you're grateful for? 
You're not going to say, you know what, I just hate everything. You're going to start to search. You know what, I'm grateful that it's raining today because it's been really hot. I'm grateful that we have a break from the sun because I'm very fair and I get burned. I'm grateful for this conversation. You're not going to look for things that you hate because you've been asked what you're grateful for. And that's the same thing that your subconscious will do. And that's a, another thing to become aware of is when you're thinking, you're compounding whatever it is that you're thinking on. When you're asking questions like, ah, why did they say this to me? Based on your programmings of pain is what's going to come to your mind because you're not coming from a place of trying to understand through love. You're in discomfort and it's going to just continue to create more. You're asking it for more discomfort. So the ask formations is to actually flip it around and you're now using the 95%. You're not using the 5% trying to beat it. You're using the 95% and the results are way faster. Last year when I had become a father, I didn't know what it meant to be a man anymore. I had no idea because I was so e easily able to provide for my family because it was just my wife and I, it was so easy. But now there's this little person who I've also got to take care of who my wife is impacted by and she needs more help. And I've also got to go to work. And there's all these different things. How the heck am I supposed to do it all? I, I crumbled. I had no idea what it meant to be a man anymore. And all I had to do, of course, with the theta healing and all that stuff too, but Combining as many modalities as you can is not going to hurt you. In fact, it's only going to enhance and advance you even more quickly through the process. Ask formations. I made myself a tape that I would listen to. Every track that I make in the background also has a theta brainwave state inducing binaural frequency to help you remain in that state. Or if you want to just go in meditation throughout the day. Those meditations exist now where you can go into theta or if you just listen to it for three to four minutes, your brain will naturally start to go into the theta state. And all of a sudden, your subconscious is getting directly reprogrammed and no affirmations do this. This is the thing. Plus, they're completely customized to your voice. Why would you ever listen to somebody else think for you? Their energy does not belong in your body. Your energy belongs in your body. And if you're going at least be saying your affirmations yourself, don't listen to somebody else, create your own tape or get an affirmation or create it based off of what I've shared with you now. It would be fantastic if a million people right now decided to buy affirmations because it would help me in my personal life. And it would also help me advance the mission with the finances. Ultimately, I don't want to hoard this stuff. Why would I do that? I want you to have the ability to take this and put it into your life right now. If you want one that's professionally edited, fine. But take the information and use it in your life so that you can help yourself because that's what it's all about. It's about love, man. It's about I love you, Peter. It's about I love everybody. Because as soon as you start to withhold your journey and oh, I know all this stuff and I'm not going to share it with people so that I can feel better than them. What is that? You're not actually helping anybody then you're only helping yourself. I don't think that's very cool. And so in terms of theta healing, it's honestly the most extraordinary healing modality that I've ever come across because it's essentially a gateway to every single spiritual device or ability that anybody could possibly want. You can do Reiki from theta healing. You can connect with your ancestors. You can connect with your guides. You can talk to creator. You can talk to your highest self. You can go into the future. You can go into the past. You can go into your body, into a specific area. Like I had this experience where I had hurt my chest really badly to the point where I literally couldn't do a push up. I would crumble if I tried to do a push up. I went into my theta meditation and I actually brought myself through the theta method into that area. And there was a little version of me in there who was banging on the walls and who was stabbing my chest and who was so angry. It was the anger that I had held on towards my father for my entire life because of our relationship and the things that he's done and that he wasn't there when I was a kid. It had manifested itself in physical pain in my chest to the point where I could not hold myself up. I connected with it through the Theta Method and I, I saw that younger version of myself in so much pain. And ah, oh, it's bringing up some tears actually, man. It was quite profound. And I just sat there. And I waited for it to calm down. When you go into that brainwave state, it's different for everybody, but for myself, it's very visual. And the visuals are very intense. Having somebody coming and stabbing you, it's quite intense. And this little version of me was like beating me up and hitting me and all this stuff. But eventually it stopped. Once it stopped, I asked, what do you need? That younger version of myself that didn't have a father came up to me as if I was the father that I, I never had. And I embraced him. 
All of a sudden, the next day I woke up and my chest was at least 50% better. That's the kind of stuff that's possible because the theta brainwave state is directly connected to your subconscious. Really scan the field that's around you for spirits to see if there's any kind of energy that's been stagnated in your household, for example. You can read stuff from across the planet. I haven't found something that's not possible through theta healing yet. There's even cases of the, the lady who helped to bring to physical manifestation the idea of theta healing, Vianna Steibel, if you want to check her out, she actually has recorded instantaneous healing of severe breakages in legs, for example. Instant. Because when you really pull apart reality, you understand that the present moment is all that there is. And the only reason that we experience a fluid timeline of existence is because every single possibility of everything that could ever exist is already here. Depending on the energy that you choose to exist in this very moment is that next present moment that's going to come to you. When people will hear things like we instantly heal the broken leg, how is that even possible? Your energy was transformed to match the vibration of an existence where your leg had healed. It's as simple as that. It's not crazy food. There doesn't have to be a 10 year study on how it works. We know how it works. The present moment is all there is. Time is an illusion. That means that all of reality exists right now, which means that the only way that you can possibly exist in the reality that you want to in terms of healing, in terms of your greatest potential future is to exist in the energy that future exists in. How could you possibly do it otherwise? You have to become the person who has the million dollars in order to have the million dollars. But then somebody might say, okay, what about manifesting a million dollars instantly into my bank account? Hey, I don't know if that's possible yet. I don't know. That one, I honestly don't have an answer for. Depends on the motive, because if you're asking for a million dollars, I don't think money is the way to manifest. I think, and I, yeah, don't I agree. Think manifestation is manifestation anymore. Ask affirmations is a great thing because if you are symbolically literate, you look at a question mark as a hook. When you ask it a question, it looks around trying to hook an answer that you need or another question to be able to get to the next question. The symbology of a question rather than a full stop, which is almost like the conscious mind, the analysis. And I'm not saying you don't need analysis, but it has to lead to synthesis. Otherwise, you're going against the generic patterning of the universe. It's like trying to run water uphill. It isn't going to work. You can't go against the natural order of it. It's the same with Viana Stibal's introduction of theta healing because you're connecting with the words that come to mind is with the creator of all that is so you can identify you can challenge you can transform those limiting beliefs during a theta state and the incorporation of theta healing into elements of meditation of prayer, the power of prayer, energy healing. And that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. We can address physical, emotional, and spiritual issues. And that can be applied instantly through this technique. Because when we engage our imagination, our visualization to enter that theta state, we can, as Bruce Lipton talks about, alter our DNA and our genetic conditions. 100%. I've actually experienced it and I've done it for many people. One of the things that you go through in your first Theta Healing training, it's actually called the basic DNA certificate or certification. You activate different aspects of your DNA and they show you how to do. Oh, it's amazing, Peter. You can, how would you say, recoil or tighten or strengthen your telomeres so that you don't age as quickly. And it's not like it's just, well, okay, I'm going to do this and then this is just happening. You actually experience it inside of yourself. Because the process of theta healing, when you're uncovering your beliefs, for example, you have to become more aware mm -hmm. of yourself in order for any of this stuff to work. Because the principle of theta healing is if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Most people would say, yes, of course it does, but it's actually not true. It only creates the potential for sound. It creates that wave potential, which if received by something which can hear, which can translate that information into sound, 
then yes it creates a sound but if not it's just a wave potential and it's the same thing with data healing you go into the state and you do whatever healing it is for example let's say i was reprogramming a belief at the end of it i would actually say it is done show me teach me and from that point it's experienced differently by everybody but for myself it's visual I always see a spark of creation come down and it expresses itself differently every single time. And I'm eventually going to work with an animator to put some of this stuff out into the world because it's just crazy, the stuff that I see sometimes. And I see it actually happening. You have to witness it. Something has to be there to translate the wave potential of healing. You have to witness it for it to be transformed inside of yourself. You have to be aware of it. You know what? I'll give you a breakdown right now for anybody who wants to try this to start transforming their lives instantly. Go into the Theta State, search up revolutionized reality, Theta Meditation. There's three on there right now. Do the extended one. Most people like that one. And go into the Theta State. Once you're there, whatever it is that's going on in your life, just start to ask questions about it. Start to ask, okay, yesterday at the office, Derek said this and it really hurt my feelings. Why did it hurt my feelings so much? and see what answer comes to you. And then allow your intuition. That is another key thing that comes along with Theta Healing is finally trusting your intuition fully because that is the guiding force of creation, man. Your inner tuition is never going to guide you incorrectly. Mm. The only time that you think you're following your intuition and something bad happens is only if you're listening to an outside voice truly or your intuition guided you away from something and you needed to experience whatever it is that's over here even if it might seem a little unpleasant because it was taking you away from an experience that would have been much worse. Maybe you would have lost your legs in a car accident or something crazy. But it truly connects you with that inner tuition, that intuition. Allow yourself to just sit and wait. Be a little patient. Allow the next question to come and continue to ask and eventually you will come to an answer. Every single person that I've given this meditation to and said, Try this out. Every single one of them has come back and said, I actually got an answer. These are people who don't regularly meditate at that, which is even more impressive because it's that powerful. So you get your answer and you will feel that this is why I'm experiencing this is because I believe this about myself. And then all you have to do is ask for that belief to be pulled and resolved from your body and that it be replaced with the knowing of whatever the opposite is. For example, if you come back with the belief that the only way that I can be happy is if I'm suffering, doesn't even make sense. But I actually held on to that belief. I held on to beliefs that I hated myself, that I was unworthy of love. And so many of us are holding on to these things. You do that because it's easy to stay with the discomfort than look at the actual truth. Yep, 100%, because it's all about survival. I should say this too, because it's not like these subconscious programs are out to hurt you. They've only been developed because your body wants to survive. That's it. So those programs are actually helping you continue to survive. But then we look at them like it causes so much discomfort because now I see freedom and now I see love and now I see that future that I actually want. And now it's causing resistance, but ultimately it's just been keeping you alive and it's not there to hurt you. It's there to help you especially because now that you see it, you have an opportunity to grow for your soul. If you had the belief that I can't be happy unless I'm suffering, you would download into yourself something like, I download the knowing that I am allowed to be happy unconditionally. And you just say, when it is done, show me, teach me, and then witness it happen. Even if you have to imagine it happening for the first while, just by the fact of you imagining it, you are making it real because your mind cannot distinguish, your body cannot distinguish from a picture of a lion from the imagination of a lion versus an actual lion. So if you're imagining the healing taking place, it's happening inside of the body. That's amazing. And eventually you will get to the point where you realize, holy crap, I am actually witnessing a whole other dimension of existence and possibility for myself. Theta healing and affirmations and everything else coming along with revolutionized reality to help people realize that they are the creators of their reality and they can experience whatever emotion they want in this mood. They don't have to suffer, that we can all live in harmony, that everything is possible. The, the true mission of it is to reveal what has been hidden. Once 
What has been hidden has been revealed to give you the tools to make the choice with the least amount of resistance. Because a lot of the times, even if we become aware of the fact that we're doing something that's not in our highest and greatest good, we'll continue on with it because the program, again, that subconscious program is 95%. Some people have put a number to it as well. I think it's 3 million times stronger than your conscious will. But if you have the tools, it becomes so effortless to realize, okay, this is what it is. Transforming it, it's done. I'm on the next level. Let's go. Part of the issue I see is that instead of being ensconced or enshrined in the process of profound freedom, which is what I would call the liberty of open-ended becoming. You ask, how is this going to work? So the left brain, the analytical part of the brain, wants to know how. And it's not about how it works. It's about you being able to issue that message and allow yourself to be subpoenaed by it. Take the action. Because if you walk into a restaurant, you look at the menu, you order off the menu, but you don't go into the kitchen and ask the chef, how are you going to cook it? You patiently wait for the waiter to bring you the food. You're not worried about how it's going to be cooked. You give it to your chief how cosmic officer and they take care of that. Not saying that you navel gaze and you don't do anything about it. You still got to take action. So we have to look at the principle of conservation to start with. In a universal view, we need the principle of con conservation. We have to ensure that there is an efficient recycling and maintenance of mm. the universe's underlying material and energetic resources as it evolves. The second part is the principle of creative ingenuity. What does that mean? That means there's a dynamic force that perpetually births new forms, new patterns, new motives that transcend and subsume what came before. We can see this in the universe, but there's a mediation that has to happen between the two. There has to be an organic trajectory of some kind, which is where we come in. And that is the grand sequence of the human existences unfolding from the simplest replicators to increasingly complex, sentient, self-reflective beings, which is what we are, where we are capable, we have the capacity to influence and even co-create with the universe's course along the way. There's an organic stream where we as human beings in, in this 21st century, this represents a pivotal stage. You being a terminal point for what you're doing is part of that pivotal stage because our species, we are entrusted with the tremendous responsibility of shepherding life's currents towards their ultimate transcendence. We are the penultimate filter through which the divine creative plan flows through and expresses itself at this phase of cosmological unveiling. We can see this in our evolutionary path because it crosses biological, social, technological, psychological domains. And it provides mm -hmm. evidence that we are indelibly anchored within this wider process. And this is imbued with immense significance. As human beings, we have been carefully constituted and engineered across these overarching phases, the biological, the evolutionary beginnings, our cultural and symbolic manifestation, and even our present, what I would call adolescence as planetary technologists, where we are flirting with the fires of altering life's trajectories. That's where the liberty of open-ended becoming is about. We contain within us the sovereign capacities of choice and self-directed participation in shaping our personal and collective identities. If we, if we don't do that, if the wall comes down and we focus on the debris, we focus on what's wrong. We're not focusing on what works.
by stepping into the space it's affording us. So that entire cosmic budding that's encapsulated in the human experience up to this point amounts to a grand choose your own adventure story across these cosmic scales. But there's a rich heritage in humanity. And there is a turbulent history that we have in what you're doing. And when you opened up the podcast with the way that you wanted to help people, you're talking about a staggering responsibility to cultivate the soil for human skills to take root. Have you ever thought about becoming a hip hop artist? (laughs) (laughs) Because man, that was beautiful. If you don't mind, I might even take a couple lines out of that. (laughs) We've sown the seeds of our undoing through the pervasive errors, through biases, through malignant cultural overlays that we're seeing today. But we are fashioned in the image of the divine creative principle, which is encoded with the primal polarities of yin and yang and masculine and feminine. That's what we are encoded with. That's the sacred charge that is bestowed upon our species to become conscious co-creators that has a compatibility of alignment with the deepest flows and processes that birth galaxies, life and consciousness. I get really excited about this kind of thing. (laughs) Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to hear you speak about it, man, because you know what? I have ventured through the world of podcasts, and I found many excellent teachers. I've never found anybody who explains this sort of stuff the way that you do, Peter. And I seriously wish that your podcast, that the work that you're doing, I I know it will. I, I know that you're going to be massively successful. And honestly, if I can help you in any way with the way that you can explain things, man, like the world needs to hear it. I've never come across, and I've gone through the, the ringer, I could probably list 30 of my teachers right now, and none of them have explained any of what's going on in the world the way that you have. So seriously, man, I'm I'm offering you the most, the highest praise that I possibly can. And if I can support you on your journey, please let me. I appreciate that very much. I I receive that. And I do what I do as a service. And this is something I've said to clients of mine who talk about, oh, I can't do this because of this. What I say to them is stop being selfish. Because I was selfish. I was hiding my light under a bushel. So stop being selfish. Get out there because this is not about you. Like you were saying earlier about the work that you do about revolutionized reality, it doesn't belong to you. You're the terminal point for it. You're the agency that can amplify it. The ripple effect of it has got to be taken up by others but isn't about them. It's about putting their light into the world so that ripple effect can resonate with others and flow into them. They can pass the baton on to the next (laughs) generation and so on and so forth. Oh, my God, yeah. (laughs) That's really what we need to be doing. What is our initiatory undertaking as a species Can we finally cultivate the spiritual maturity to grasp the full significance of our role as cosmic midwives, to selflessly (laughs) usher in and bear witness to what is transcendent, to that which all proceeds to completion, and where this universe bursts forth into its full divinity? Can we do that as a species? Absolutely. And we're doing it right now. The fact that we're having this conversation is the fact of a new age. It's so beautiful. And everything that you said, somebody who's new to this concept, for example, they might hear everything that you said and say, holy shit, I have all of this responsibility. And they could be overwhelmed by that instead of realizing that it's such an incredible gift because you also so concisely explained that you don't have to know how the rest of it's going to work. Essentially, all that you have to do is take care of yourself and open yourself to the possibility of unconditional love, to the possibility of what the universe has conspired to create as you as the terminal for whatever flow of consciousness, just allow that to come through you, then every single other thing will work itself out. Like when I've talked to people about this idea of 
yeah, we're going to live in the greatest humanity that's ever existed. They, the, what are you talking about? Look at all the wars. Look at all this. Look at all what's going on. Why would I focus my attention there? I focus on helping the people become those versions of themselves that they want to become. In saying that, people would also say, you're going to need farmers, you're going to need plumbers, you're going to need electricians. Who's to say that people can't love doing those things? It, it no, just absolutely. blows my mind. Like becoming the greatest version of you. Dude, I love to do construction stuff. I love to build stuff. Why would I stop doing that just because I've become spiritual? I, it, it makes it even more enjoyable because I can lose myself in the process more. And th that goes to say too, at a certain point of living in a state of meditation, and I, I'm not completely there yet, but more and more so my life every day is becoming like this. Everything is becoming enjoyable, no matter what it is. I'm continuing to learn and continuing to grow, but I can feel the progress and I know that one day it's just going to click and I'm going to non-stop just be in love with life essentially enlightened i think is what we would call the term right it's just such a beautiful thing that really all you need to do to contribute to this mission just be yourself allow yourself to be yourself do what's necessary for you to allow yourself to be yourself and you become the electrician who's spiritually awakened in your field that's being casted out and resonating and touching the walls of other people's fields the hundredth monkey theory, you're affecting the rest of the cosmos this way. Most people's egoic maps are way off. We have to create a new map that aligns with the territory. You, me, we will both die. It's unknown, but it's certain. But we go on these pretentious pursuits of health and anti-aging because we think it's going to alleviate our view of death. No, it's not. It's not. There's a whole idolatry around it. So we need to create new maps. The maps are not who we are. They're adaptive maps. A map is a map. It's not who yeah. you are. Can we create a map that aligns with the new territory that doesn't have blind paradigms as distinct from having the sense of being self-inflated or deflated? When you listen to people speaking, they're either speaking from one of two places, their wounds or their gifts. Well said. Yeah. And it's really that simple. And, oh, you know what? You, you reminded me of this post I made too, since we're touching on the topic of death. I had made this post, right? And in the video, it's my family's dog, Gizmo. On the screen, it comes across and it reads, if you truly want to be a leader in your life and one of these people who is going to help to change the world, you need to realize that this dog is going to die. Do you know how many people I got that texted me or called me or commented or whatever that said, man, this is so morbid. Why are you saying this? But if you actually were to read the post, that death is something that is so beautiful because it reminds me not to take advantage of the time that I have left with him. It reminds me that those flowers won't be here all year. And while they're here, I should appreciate them as much as I possibly can and that I'm not going to be here forever. And as long as this body exists, shouldn't I love it? Shouldn't I, I eat the right foods to show it that I love it? Shouldn't I do the exercise to show it that I love it? Wear the clothing that is representative of who I am. This stuff is deep. Cotton clothing, for example, and wool clothing have the potential to increase your body's frequency. Whereas all these synthetic materials actually steal energy from your body. Yeah. That's amazing how tuned in you can become to that sensitivity too. But to go back to the whole death thing, it really is a gift. It's a mercy. Imagine if you could never die. If you were existing in your current life right now, how many people would be absolutely miserable at the prospect of having to exist forever? Most of the world, that would probably make them hate life even more. They wouldn't even realize that their immortality would actually make them hate it even more because they can't appreciate the fact that it's not forever. Your youth is not forever. While you can jump as high as you can and slam a basketball in the hoop, do it if it brings you joy. Why wouldn't you? How many yeah. more Christmases do you have left? <laughs> Seriously. How many more times can you say goodnight to your mom over the phone? when you look at the work that you do where you come into the present i think you said at the beginning of the podcast the present is all we have well newsflash your body's always in the present it's your mind that can be either in the future or in the past we have this rocker bar where we go between the two guilt guilt shame past fear anxiety future 
But hang on, let's come into the present. Let's come back into the body. So it's not about getting out of the body, getting rid of ego and smashing the ego because it has its uses. But it's about coming into the body and understanding what is this human design and this human technology capable of. Hmm. You were talking about the practice you did before you came on the podcast about doing some fader healing. Absolutely. Meditation work. Absolutely. Prayer, the power of prayer is so powerful. It's like the salt over top of your meal. It just gives it that extra little... Like yeah. everything that I possibly can now, Peter, I'm intentionally directing, how would I say, my highest and greatest reality onto it. For example, even if I felt fine coming onto this podcast, I still would have stopped and gone into meditation and aligned, made sure, made absolutely sure that I was perfectly aligned with the greatest potential outcome for who I could be during this time that I have with Peter because I want to make the greatest time of it. Like, why wouldn't you do that in the first place? It's such an amazing tool and it literally does change every single interaction that you have from that point onwards. Like I've totally transcended that anxiety that I had before. I feel incredible. And again, thank you for this opportunity to do that in such a unique way. You've gone from a separation event to an integration event. Yeah. When you feel separation, You feel at distance from you, from your connection with higher things, from your connection with you and your connection with source and connection with your abilities and your capabilities. That's what separation causes. And then it causes fragmentation. It's the slippery, greasy pole of development. It's not about two steps forward and four steps back. It's about going up and down the pole of development. And it's greasy and it's slippery. Here we are trying to climb it and sliding down. But you know what? It's not about getting to the top. It's who are we becoming in the process? What resources are we generating within our cellular life, in our DNA, in our neurology? What are we encoding? What micro-coded compact essences are waking up? Yeah, I don't know. You just triggered another thought. Have you ever looked into the yuga cycles i'm reading at the moment perfect so then you know what's going on about our current alignment and so much of our what was called junk dna is being activated and has been being activated for quite a while now it's just another one of those things like we're in the greatest time to have ever existed in my opinion i know that there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now but who says it has to go on that way forever we have the choice so long as we make it What you focus on expands. Exactly. You can choose to be part of the whole machinery of distraction, or you can choose to put your focus on what is true and what is light and what is bright and what is necessary for you to be able to be part of that co-creation, to be a participant. You are the CEO on the board of your own existence. Do you have the ability to be self-directed or are you being directed by something or someone else? That's not sovereignty. That's not self-authorship. That's why the subconscious reprogramming is so important because it's either you're living by the beat of your own drum or somebody else is playing it for you. Why would you ever want to live that way? All of the pain that we are experiencing in our daily lives comes back to a programming that we have received. The emotional pain, it's just a conditioning that you've received. We do not need to exist like that. We are liberating mankind. As we have this conversation, there are new ripples that are spreading out through the cosmos that are going to hit more and more people. And as long as we continue on our mission, honestly, in our lifetime, we are going to see the greatest transformation of mankind. I truly believe that in our lifetime, we are going to witness the mass awakening. And I don't just mean awakening in terms of coming into realizing that we are spirit in physical form, but that there will be a level of enlightenment attained across a mass scale for those who have been doing this work. And it's going to happen just like that. Because like with us aligning with the center of our galaxy and the yuga cycles and everything, there is so much happening to the point 
where we come and actually fully align with the very center. But until the key is put into the lock and it's pushed against all the prongs and it's finally turned, then the door opens. We're coming to that pressure cooker moment where the top is about to be blown off of humanity's experience and enlightenment is just going to rain down everywhere. And those who have just awakened are going to have countless teachers in their lives that are going to be able to guide them through absolute unconditional love, through all of that pain and suffering that we, the originals, the, the first group has gone through. Our ancestors who had to fight with swords and arrows and oh my God, could you imagine the suffering in that time? I'm so grateful to my ancestors that I'm able to be here in this time and that they went through that so I could be here, man. That's who we get to be to them, essentially. We get to be the people who have gone through the shit so that as quickly as possible, they too can reach greater heights of themselves and greater love within themselves. And what we're going to see unfold in the next 20 years, I don't think we would have ever been able to imagine it. Like That's you best. said, it's not our job to control the outcome, but only direct the greatness of ourselves and in the alignment with that stream of consciousness. We only see what we teach ourselves to see. When I observe the great assemblies that are unfolding across this cosmos, and we work to support, as distinct from hinder the forces of existence, and we strive towards a higher order of structure and understanding, because these elements, they've all assembled into stars, into planets, into life, into consciousness, across eons and eons so too may the human consciousness and the assemblage of developmental knowledge and wisdom will achieve one day, maybe it'll be in 20 years, maybe in 10 years, maybe in five years, but one day that will achieve some greater synthesis where there'll be an integrated understanding or standing under that illuminates what the ultimate meaning is within this fast cosmic drama well said man any passing words and where can people find you so where people can find me is at revolutionized reality on instagram on youtube those are really the platforms that i'm mostly on though i've taken a hiatus because of the crazy crap that's been going on i had to move our whole lives out of a house in a week there's been so much back and forth between three cities it's been too hectic for me to to really maintain a presence but i will be back because things are settling down so you can find me there. The meditations are on the YouTube channel, Revolutionize Reality. Because it's not a huge channel yet, you're probably going to have to search directly Theta Meditation, Revolutionize Reality, and then you'll find me. There will be a picture of me wearing a jean jacket and a white shirt. You'll see me. Simply said, everything is going to be okay. And so the last point that I wanted to touch on is when you think about things like the hundredth monkey theory and you really explore the world of how energy works and that we're basically each emanating a particular frequency from us that can extend like they it was said that the buddha's aura extended 3000 miles or more just as one person imagine what would happen if we built this community of like-minded people who want to exist in harmony with reality and when i talk about this too i'm not talking let's go live like the amish and not use technology not that there's anything wrong with them but the integration of technology to, to allow us certain conveniences and certain time and, and certain things, why would we not use a, a forklift? A community that's fully integrated with the advancement of technology, but foremostly the advancement of our consciousness, what would happen if a massive group of people existed in one place on the planet that were fully aligned with that reality? What kind of ripples would be sent out to the rest of mankind? For example, when I do the Om circle and we come together and we're meditating together and oftentimes we will do Ohms, every single person there is acting as a type of vibrational device, essentially. And we each connect with each other. I'll, I'll do the Ohms by myself and it is never as powerful as when I'm in a room with 20 other people who are doing it because we're all amplifying that energy. So my God, I, I can't even begin to fathom what kind of change would rapidly occur on the rest of the planet when we all finally meet on that point of and we continue our individual missions. A part of the thing too is when we first begin this community, why ever would we stop using technology or the internet? Because we all come together living in this place 
again, our field is directly affected by everything that's around us. So if you're surrounded by people of a like mind and who are constantly building themselves and, and developing themselves and experiencing more bliss and more love, naturally, you're just going to absorb that. What if these people decided, well, I mean, there would be a certain amount who wouldn't, but the people who would imagine the incredible wisdom that would blossom from them that they could go out and share into the world now through the internet, like we're doing right now. <laughs> I, 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 it just blows my mind what is actually possible and how quickly it can all happen. That's why I'm here. I want it to happen as quickly as it can. I don't want to force things, but as quickly as it can happen and we can come together, then let's do it and let's make this happen. And those people who want to go back out into the world and share everything they possibly can to help their fellow man become the greatest version of themselves, going to bed thinking about that is just a beautiful thing. Have you read Maps of Consciousness by David Hawkins? No, I haven't. Check it out. How have you experienced today? Phenomenal. Same with the last time that I talked to you. And I don't know if you've written a hundred books and have all of this stuff stored away, or if you just have the ability to create such incredible comparisons and witty turns on things. Like the last time I talked to you, we were talking about people who only want to read about consciousness and the practices and stuff instead of implementing it. And you said, then it becomes shelf knowledge rather than self knowledge. Shelf development. Shelf development. That's amazing. I've appreciated talking to you and having the privilege of being able to talk to you and experiencing your stream of consciousness as well. Some okay. of the things you said were salient and quite profound as well. And I would say thank you for your vulnerability. I really respect you for that and for coming on with authenticity. Because for someone to do that, especially for a man, most men hide these things and come on all with guns blazing and I'm all yeah. love and light and all the rest of it. Thank you for that. Hey, you're so welcome. And that's also a thank you to you because I felt genuinely comfortable to be able to, well, maybe I didn't open this up as much as I possibly could have, but I would have felt fine to do it. Because you do provide a very non-judgmental space. And like you were saying, when you're speaking with somebody and interacting with somebody, you can feel what they're giving off and... Yeah, your energy is fantastic, man. It's very peaceful. It's non-judgmental. And I appreciate you for that too. So thank you. You're welcome, Jordan. Listen, take care. Stay in touch. All right, man.